Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. Today I'm going to show you how to exploit Forest from Hack the Box. Forest is a Windows machine as you can see here. I've already done it, but we're going to be exploiting Windows Active Directory. Offensive Security recently updated their material for the OSCP to include Active Directory exploitation. And this machine is one of the great examples on how you can practice to exploit Active Directory. In particular for this one, it's going to be Kerberos misconfiguration. I'm going to show you how most administrators might be very, very careless and not enable pre-authentication in the Active Directory and what happens if they don't do that. So without wasting time, let's go to our machine and we can start hacking this machine. Okay, so now we are in our Kali Linux machine. I've already created a folder in my documents called Forest so I can keep all my information organized. And the first thing that I do is 10.10.10.161. Just want to ping, make sure that our victim machine is online. Then from there, the first, second thing is I want to run Nmap. You're going to notice that this time I'm running with this switch for P for all ports, same default scripts, finding versions, outputting to a file named Nmap all and minimum rate for me is 2000. So this can go a little bit faster. And after running this command, after a couple minutes, you're going to get results. This saves me time. So I, from our results here, we're going to see that uh, we have port 88 for Kerberos, uh, 53. And from this information alone, and this LDAP here, we can quickly find out that this is a Windows domain controller was uh, this, these are the ports that m most Windows domain controllers need to be able to work as domain controllers in the services. I used to be a system administrator for a Windows environment, so this is uh, exciting for me to see. And we also see of interest things like um, WinRM is also open. Uh, to make it easy for me to see this, I import these results into my pentest.ws and it will list them for me. And this is also part of my documentation uh, because I want to keep uh, things documented somewhere. And of interest right away is you're going to see that um, our PC is open. So we know that this might be one of the ways to get into this system as well. And since it's a domain controller, we're going to ignore port 53. Uh, we have Kerberos authentication, which we think we might be able to exploit because uh, as long as we can steal some hashes, that, that's what you uh, do to Kerberos. So if you don't know anything about Kerberos attacks, let's, let's just, uh, how do I attack Kerberos, you know, very, very quickly. You see that um, there's a whole documentation. Brute force, probably not the most graceful way to get into a machine. So I will not try to brute force, but what you can do is run different tools, including, including um, this one here. And they tell you all the things that you need to do. Like for example, there's an imperfect Python script named get python.py. So this is good stuff. So we have that information. But before we do that, let's start with the easiest stuff. Okay, so the next service that we are looking at is Microsoft Windows RPC. Uh, let's check to see if anonymous login is allowed here. Because if it is allowed, then we, we might be in business. And the command that you run is MRCP, RPC client, the port. And if you do, say negative U percent, it's just going to try to sign in with an anonymous login. And as you can see, we are in. And from here, we can actually enumerate domain users if, if it allows us. So if you run enum DOM users, this, this will look for domain users and quickly, I mean, very, very quickly, we got a list. So I like to copy that. Let's go to here and I want to save my results. Look, looking at our results here, we have, uh, let's just go from the top. We have administrator, which is default guest, which is different default. And this one also is a default account. So everything going up, it's kind of default, but we know that the administrator account is enabled. We have now have user Sebastian, and these are the names. But of interest is this account. 
Why am I interested in this account? Because it looks like it's a service account. All the other accounts are named normally, but this one is named SVC, which is very critical and typical of Windows uh, administrators to name their accounts this way. So what we can do is now that we know that we have a user, we can go back to our article on how to attack Kerberos, and it tells us uh, we can run an imperfect script called getusers.py, and we can see if we can get in. I'll give you a little bit background about why you would run this. And what we're trying to do here is we're going to see if we can try to see if our Kerberos is configured correctly. And by correct, I mean you need pre-authentication in place for users to be able to sign in. If pre-authentication is not enabled, things can go really bad. Why is that the case? I'll explain a little bit. With Kerberos pre-authentication enabled, Kerberos allows users to sign in to the domain and access resources. It's an authentication method. And with pre-authentication enabled, a user will send a hash to the server saying, hey, grant me access to sign in. And the server will send back a hash saying, okay, you are who you are. The server verifies that this request is from the past five minutes and the user is the correct person. They provided the right information. So here is another hash back to the user and that hash has the user's password. So you see how important that pre-authentication needs to get set. If pre-authentication is not set, what happens is anyone can go to the authentication server and say, hey, let me in. And the server will send back and say, okay, there you go, here is a hash. And people like me would crack the hash and get the password. So that's what we're going to try to do here. Okay, so now that we know that we have Kerberos running and we need to attack our Kerberos, uh, we're going to look at uh, the getusers.py as they suggest here. Uh, this will check to any users that do not have pre-authentication. And if they don't, we'll get the hash. We'll make the, it will make the request for us and bring back the hash. And this is the script. I suggest that you read through it and understand what's going on if you can. But uh, we're just going to call this here. But uh, there's going to be a little bit of uh, change for me here. So I'll copy the first part. <clears throat> and then I'm going to say I don't want any password. You can see this by just running the script without any arguments. It will show you. Then negative K. And I want the DC IP to be... 10.10.10.161, which is our victim machine. And the domain is going to be hackthebox.local. And then we want to be using, uh, to be attacking our person. So it's going to be service alfresco and see what happens. As you can see, I have an error in here. Okay, so as you can see, I ran into a couple of uh, errors here is because I put spaces and now it should run and quickly within a few seconds I got a hash and if I do an ls here I already saved this hash as uh, svc alfresco dot hash and if you do ls svc alfresco dot hash that's what it looks like which is the same as the other one there and to save this you can quickly just copy this and vi and create a file so that's good and this hash can be cracked using john so let's uh, use my favorite command locate john I want to see where john lives on our system we have so many options here okay so to, to run john since john is already installed i just test john quick and see if i get any usage so that's uh these are all the commands that you can run on john uh one of them is to point him to wait list with a w and in this case i'll be using roku.txt against my alfresco and so the command that will run is just john and you, you and the wait list and then point it to the hash okay so we got our hash here as you can see so what i want to do is i want to save this hash the way it is, let's copy and vi hash dot hash, because why not? 
very quickly and paste it. Escape, right quit. And um, to crack this hash, what we need to do is just use John. And John allows us to crack hashes pretty much. And John has all these options. So one of them is pointing to the word list and the hash. That way it will crack the password for us. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run John against um, our Roku dead text and then point him to the hash. So this is what you do, then do a hash dot hash. Let's see if this works. All right, that was very quick. Usually, uh, sometimes I have to copy these hashes to my computer, which is stronger than my Kali VM. But we've got a password service for our user service of, of, of Fesco. So this is good. Since we have a password, we can quickly sign into our machine now. With our hash, we can just use WinRM quickly. And WinRM allows us to sign in as the evil person. And to do that, let's just look up evil dash win rm okay first result takes us here and here's some documentation about evil win rm if you haven't used it before it's worth your time to spend some time and uh, find out how to do it so this is what we're going to do we're going to use this tool to sign in and we have to specify the ip the user and the password and it will get us in if you have if you don't have it on your computer here are the installation instructions and on mine, I, I do have it, so I can do a locate, evil WinRM, and as you can see, it's everywhere. <laughs> so go ahead and install evil WinRM if you don't have it. It should come with your Kali Linux, I think. Get, get back here. Now we're pointing to the actual application. And let's do, we want the IP address to be 10.10.10.161. .10 .10 my user is as we see our fresco and our password that we found so this command should get us in let's see yep we fired up if we are in and as you can see we are in as our user so we can do it there in here in my documents to see what i have um okay cd maybe if i go down one in cd desktop as you can see, I'm on my desktop here. If I do it there, I should see my flag, user.text. So that's the first step. As you can see, it was very simple to uh, attack. We are now in as a user, and this is our first flag. Now we need to escalate our privileges. For privilege, for privilege escalation, we're going to be using Bloodhound. This is what you fire up for Windows Active Directory machines. You just fire up Bloodhound and see what happens. And... To fire up a Bloodhound, you just need to install Bloodhound and launch Bloodhound and make sure that it's running. So if you don't know how to do that, please do a simple Google search on how to use Bloodhound. But what we're going to do is we're going to fire up Bloodhound and it will help us in the enumeration of our target. So I started mine here to save us time. Then uh, from there, I want to download my Bloodhound PowerShell script to my target machine. So what we can do to do that is Let's go to where I'm serving my HTTP server here. Clear. Let's find the sharphound.ps1. So this is the script that we need to use uh, Bloodhound for enumeration. So do locate, and you want to copy. I want to copy it here because that's where I do most of my stuff. Paste. I want it in here, so same place, the same name. There we go. And let's now do I have my sharphound.ps1 here. Yes, I do. Okay, now we can fire back our Python HTTP server, go back to our victim machine quick, and do the same command that we did to try to download uh, sharp hound so I I'm giving up on netcat ah oh, come on I didn't want that the 
the PS1. So again, this is a, a Windows enumeration tool that if you have Active Directory, it's worth running. So I'll show you exactly how to use this. If I do it there. All right. Now that I have it in there, I need to invoke the Bloodhound collection with my user and see what happens. Because we have our PowerShell in there. And to do that, we paste this one. Invoke Bloodhound collection. We're using LDAP port, our user, and password. Can we do that? Let's do it there. Now, as you can see, we have some interesting things here. We have this file and we have this bin file. What we want is this zip file. We want to bring that zip to our, to our um, to, we want to transfer this zip back to our machine. I have a zip file here. I copied it from my Kali, I mean, from my Windows machine to here. If you haven't copied files between Kali and Windows machine, just Google how to copy files, Kali and Windows. That you get a lot of documents and you can go through this and it talks about the FTP and HTTP, but it's very simple to set up and to do so. Without wasting time, I will proceed here. Now that we have our file here, our zip file, uh, what I want to do is open up my Firefox and come up here, actually, my Bloodhound. As you can see, we have a Bloodhound here. If you go down here, you're going to see that um, in the, the queries section, we can say find shortest path to the domain. But to do that, let's just uh, go to our documents forest, find our zip file that we got from our machine, you can drop it in here. And a few things will happen. As you can see, then if we do say follow, show this path to domain admin, bam. Now we got something interesting. Let's move it around. Okay, so we have our, our exchange windows permissions here. If we go to Google, how to escalate using um, ex exchange, you will find that we need to, oh yeah, here. How do we escalate our user in exchange? It will explain everything here and what you need to do and what, how you need to do. So I did try a few of these things, but in a nutshell, uh, we're trying to ab abuse a service called DC Sync. And what is that? DC Sync. Uh, is an uh, attack actually that we do on a machine to identify users and just dump their hashes. And this is done by uh, trying to sync the Active Directory from uh, the AD accounts that you have. And then uh, from there, we should be able to just uh, get a hash. And for, to do that, um, you need to make sure that you have the Neo4j up and running because that's where it will try to dump them from. And since we already know that we have this exchange permissions, uh, we're going to just use that. Okay, so for... All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to run this against our hang the box domain. And this is actually going to find out if um, it will work. And you need to make sure that our, your Neo4j database is actually up and running. And then specify the rest, the user, and uh, the the good stuff. So I'm going to run this, but for now I'll change my database password to the secret, and run it. Okay. Once it's done running properly, you will see that you see we have all this. You we, we now have connected, and we are part of these memberships, operators, exchange Windows permissions. So we are ready to dump our rights as you can see here because now we now have dc sync rights which means that we can from the previous screen we learned that we can use our secret dump.py 
it's part of the impact so it's part of the impact uh suite we get our python secret dump.py and what this does pretty much is it will go and abuse ad sync i mean dc sync and as long as we have a valid user we'll be able to get there and collect password hashes so we added ourselves to the dc user group and when you go back in when you go back in we need to make sure that we first run this command here to make sure that our user is in the right group like i showed you earlier is added to dc sync then after that run secret dump and as you can see here secret dump uh, you just specify the domain the user right here and then it will ask you for a password and when you enter it it will just um give you the hashes so i just froze this screen here for a second because uh, i had to do it a couple of times and it crashed my machine i don't know why but yeah that's how you get the administrator hash and since we have the hash from the administrator here let's see if we can use our friend um uh, winrm if winrm okay i need to specify the ip of course okay now can we get in boom now we're in as an administrator so again to reiterate if you run secret dumps after you got the proper permissions here you should be able to get the hash and when you get the hash we're in as an administrator if we change here let's see what we can do let's go to the desktop and see our flag cd desktop and there here's our second flag root.txt so this was a fun machine as you can see very simple to do if you know the tools to use if you like this type of content please remember to subscribe and like my videos it helps me a lot and uh, by liking my videos you're helping me reach out to more people so if you like my videos uh, and subscribe i will see you guys next time with another windows machine as well